Uh, there, you know, there is some ongoing construction. Uh, I don't see any construction workers on the freeway up ahead, so that some good news there, uh, as this guy's obviously already willing to show that he's he will go through a construction zone if, if need be, and uh, just just making its way past quickly past these uh, other vehicles that are just trying to make their way north up the 14, trying to get you Avenue M. So we're northbound 14 passing. Avenue M at this point. I believe I heard 80 miles an hour, 85 miles an hour. So it's certainly uh, driving very fast here uh, as we make our way into the Lancaster area. What what Rich is we're watching what uh, you are showing us live on the left Ooh. part of your screen. On the right part of your screen, we're showing some of the videotape that you guys shot as it was happening. And we just saw the truck uh, drive through a, a dirt construction zone, go airborne, as you said, uh, and continue to drive along. Uh, on the left side, you're looking at the Antelope Valley, where the truck is right now, uh, moving up the 14 north. It'll eventually hit Mojave up there uh, if it gets through Lancaster. Um, and then uh, if, you, if you know that area, when you, when you get up to Mojave, you sort of hang a right and, and head up toward uh, in the direction of uh, Mammoth. That's, that's typically the way that many people will drive up there. Uh, but very dangerous behavior by these uh, carjack suspects. Uh, we now, it's now multi-jurisdictional uh, pursuit. We just saw a moment ago an L.A. Uh, County Sheriff's uh, SUV trailing behind. Uh, this began as an LAPD uh, surveillance and pursuit. And, uh, and at some point, I suspect, Rich, the CHP will join in. Yeah, if they haven't joined already, I'm trying to find that out uh, as we speak, whether or not CHP is involved in this pursuit. I'm sure they are aware. Uh, you know, they may even set up at some of these on-ramps here in case they do need to intercept. But as far as we know right now, Sheriff is uh, the lead agency. So I'm just here trying to listen to the radio chatter. So, okay, so they may, they may continue to back off at least the, the ground units. They are, they are following this from the air uh, regardless of whether the, the black and whites decide to stay directly behind this white F-150. It looks like he's starting to veer off towards the right, maybe trying to look, trying to find exit. No, we're gonna we're gonna flip around here, and we're gonna mm. possibly go the. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like that was a, a dangerous Side. remove maneuver there. Going there we go. Going, going reversing. Uh, that's an on yeah, ramp. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's going against. Tra We know this must be frustrating for you at home watching this, uh, but, but, but please understand Rich and, and the crew there doing their best to uh, provide a signal from quite a ways away up in Lancaster. I can hear they've, they've come back. Let's show the picture again. Uh, Rich, as, as you're now, uh, thankfully, it didn't, uh, we didn't see anyone injured in that uh, terrible maneuver going the wrong way on the off-ramp, but now this person uh, driving in circles uh, on the side streets there. Yes, yeah, so he, he got off. He was going to go uh, eastbound, then westbound, uh, then eastbound, now westbound again. So here we are. Uh, he, you can see he's really uh, picking up some speed here. Westbound, trying to cut his way through traffic here. We have a lot more traffic here on this main road here. I'll try and get you uh, what street this is. I believe it might be Avenue K, but uh, I, will get, I will confirm that for you here. Uh, very shortly. We're trying to hear the, the radio chatter. Uh, this could be Lancaster Boulevard, believe it or not. Uh, so still westbound here on the on the main street here. We're trying to maneuver around the trees here as best we can. Through the cross traffic, look, he had a green light there. For and this is Avenue where you... J. Okay, so we're on Avenue, Avenue J. J. Okay. This is where you begin to see pedestrians rich and stoplights, like you said, where it becomes really dangerous as people are going about their morning and there's an unsuspecting uh, pursuit that's happening through the area. Uh, and we've seen this person become more erratic behind the wheel over the last uh, several moments. So again, uh, something that I'm sure authorities are incredibly uh, worried about when it comes to public safety. Oh, nearly hitting that car there. 
Yeah, certainly we're seeing a lot more uh, traffic here. It looks like, what is that? I uh, thought maybe that was a school or something here, but uh, certainly some more people on the roadway. You know, it's you know it's right at that prime time, 9 a.m. And there's a school right there. You can see some pedestrians that are that are still out. Oh, here we go. Turn Boom. there, making contact yeah. with 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 that driver there just outside of the school. Ab we're, we're north of Avenue J on a smaller street here, continuing northbound. And uh, yeah, just just another car that that was that was. Uh, you know, affected here during this pursuit. We've seen we've seen a couple of crashes during the duration of this pursuit. Uh, one including uh, a black and white unit from the LAPD or the sheriff's department wasn't wasn't able to uh, see which which agency was involved, but certainly at least one black and white involved in a crash. And now we hear westbound again was uh, in the center lane there for 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 a moment there, cutting across, making oh. a sharp turn here, now southbound. Thirtieth Street West from Lancaster Boulevard. And you can see it's there's a school right here. So it's going around this school. It looks like to be a high school here. Uh near Lancaster Boulevard. And we have at least one black and white that's that's behind uh possibly the sheriff's department. Directly behind this, uh, possible s stolen F-150, making a sharp turn there. Now we are eastbound. 35th Street, 30, 35th Street West, about 55 miles an hour. Seeing more people here on the road, opposite, almost opposite lanes here. Oh, yep, there he goes, okay. Ooh, nearly missing the Sheriff's Department there. Now northbound again on 32nd Street West from Avenue J. So he's back on that street where he, where he crashed into uh, that white car, now up on the sidewalk through the parking lot. Uh, I don't know if there's really an easy way out of here. He could have boxed himself in here. Let's see if the, see if the Sheriff's Department can block off these exits. Oh. No, he's gonna make his way out. Oh my goodness. Okay, now we are back out onto the small street here and He's back off to the races here, southbound, 32nd Street West. All right, now he's back. He's basically, as we get the back signal, the oh, all right. Mm. Oh, man, the truck's coming apart. He's damaging other vehicles, one after another. Looks like he threw something yeah, these, from these, the vehicle okay. as well. Yeah, well, look, <laughs> there's there's lots of things in the back of the truck that are that are flying out. You got the partially the front end that's that's also shattered along the roadway. Those motorists just, you know, they weren't they weren't moving. He was trying to uh, shove his way through two cars, but uh, he had no luck, so uh, ended up backing out down on the major here. And let's see, we'll widen out here. And yeah, looks like some of the the black and white units have backed off, or at least they're having a little bit of a. Uh, uh, you know, a tougher time trying to get a, get out of that traffic to try and intercept this white F-150 once again. But this guy clearly sh showing uh, all attempts to try and get away here has no intention of, of stopping, regardless of what the obstruction is. And we're at uh, 40th Street South here, slowing down here, maybe look, maybe disabled, possibly looking for a spot to run from the truck. That's Let's see here. We're not sure if this truck is disabled, but you can see uh, the black and whites have caught up here. So we have at least four units from the sheriff's department. Oh, there we go. We saw one person jump out going through a backyard here in a residential area. Okay. Sheriff, sheriff are now out on foot. I don't know. Maybe that's the only person in the car. Maybe David can keep an eye on that white F-150. Let me know if anybody else decides to run from that truck. So uh, we believe this is the driver of that F-150, now on foot in a residential area here. I'll try and get you a, a, a locator here in just a moment. So we start, uh, let's see, I believe he's tucked in here, possibly by the boat on the side of the home here. So he did hop the wall, we'll see a sheriff's department. They're gonna go, they're gonna make their way around into this cul-de-sac here. Uh, Frank and Jess, let me know if you still have the signal. We do. We, we still see the signal. We have not seen that suspect emerge from that 
location, as you said, right near the boat between the homes. There's the wall there, a pool, two pools in the back. But as far as we know, that's where that person uh, is hiding. Um, that person did not emerge. You had a clear shot for us throughout this. Uh, so if uh, the deputies uh, focus on that area between North. the two homes, they will the probably street. find the suspect. Yeah, we're trying to listen to the airship. The last, the last sight they had was was near this boat on the side of the house. Now we're hearing possibly northbound. So if that put him northbound, then he may have hopped the wall here. So uh, mm. bear with us here as we're trying to. This suspect who was last seen wearing a look like some blue jeans, uh, brown long sleeve T-shirt, and uh, was seen hopping through backyards here. So the sheriff's department still has this. This section uh, closed off here, so you can see they have a perimeter set up around this cul-de-sac here where that scanning through the yards here to see if we can find where he could be hiding while the Sheriff's Department also continues to move in. They could be in it making some tight circles overhead, so they are doing their best under, okay, let's see here. We're getting a little bit of chatter. Same yard, you think? Same yard? Okay. Okay, so we believe he's still on the same property. We're trying to make our way around here. There's a spa cover. That looks like it could be it. So he might be still in the backyard of this home. And Sheriff's Department is going to just basically keep converging onto this one there, there he is, is there sir there he is. okay so so the area unit area unit's got pretty good sight now we do so okay he's making his way back over onto the side yard and we'll see if he decides to hop this block wall he's got a looks to be a cell phone so uh, we'll be careful as to what we share here well uh, let's hope the folks who live in that home uh, have their doors locked and uh, are aware that of what's happening here um the sheriff's deputies will get this person, and if uh, if he doesn't give up soon, they'll just release a canine, and, and that will probably encourage uh, him to stop fleeing. Yeah, he's put himself in a position where it's, it's going to be very difficult for him to get away. He's basically in the conf confines of this backyard. The sheriff's department already has the, the area. Perim they have a perimeter around this area. The air unit clearly has eyes on him. He has no no vehicle at this point, so uh, it's going to be. Making his way out towards the front. We'll see if uh, the sheriff's department is out here in the cul-de-sac. Okay, now he's running across the street into another. Uh, okay, oh, there he is. Hopping another wall here. Yeah. Where yeah. are authorities you know, at the end of the cul-de-sac? Yeah, uh, well, they're on all four corners of this of this block here. So, okay. uh, the area, as you can see, so as he's making his hopping his there. making his way hopscotching through the backyards, he's now going from street to street. Mm. So, uh, so they're having to continue. You can see the neighborhood here. So he's going from one cul-de-sac to there another, and you can see they're just. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we got more and more units arriving here. cover more of the area at a given time now. He's going to have very little space to go anywhere without running into a black and white here, a sheriff's deputy, uh, maybe LEPDs down here, maybe CHP, but we do know there are multiple black and whites, including the airship, that are here. So we'll try and get eyes on him once again. He's cutting his way through the backyards. And this, this is a suspect who is, again, wanted for carjacking, has, and we've seen it with our own what, eyes, what was the last size, been last responsible visual? for uh, all sorts of property damage. Hopefully no one has been injured in this process, but uh, it has no regard for anyone uh, in the public and, and the Sheriff's Department moving in to take this person into custody. There's... Yeah, so it's... It, Video it sounds like the air unit has pretty good eyes on a, a good sense of where he's at. You can see some of the sheriff deputies 
looking over this block wall into this area. There's lots of trees and bushes here, so he may have tucked his, found a way uh, to tuck himself in. Uh, and then, of course, we are looking from up here into Sky 5, but he was right in this. Let's see, what do we got here? We got more deputies, so they are now in the multiple backyards in this neighborhood trying to locate where this guy might be hiding, maybe in the bushes. We haven't heard anything about him making his way into a home, so that's some good news. And the deputies yeah, have to be incredibly careful here. They, they're assuming this person is armed. Uh, you know, they they do not know if this person is just trying to run away or there's a dog. I don't know if it's a canine or just a, the family dog, but uh, uh, they don't know if this person is simply trying to flee or will try to shoot it out uh, as they're escaping. But maybe that dog was a uh, Sheriff's Department canine because those are very persuasive dogs uh, with these suspects um, who uh, often... Uh, give up very quickly once they have uh, a police dog with its jaws around its leg, uh, the person's leg. And we don't know if that is the case here or if that was just, again, a family dog. But uh, it, the Sheriff's Department uh, folks now have their guns drawn as they uh, move around these backyards. Uh, and we are in Lancaster in the Antelope Valley where this pursuit began in Los Angeles and the Foothill Division went over the mountains and down into the Antelope Valley, and now we're in Lancaster. Yeah, Frank, he's really found a spot to uh, tuck in, so it, everybody's trying to find him from the area and the ground, but, you know, it, it, last time we saw he was within this cluster of homes, and it's it would be very difficult for him to make his way out of these cluster of homes without being seen, especially from up top. You can see they're making their way through the gazebo, through... Uh, the bushes. They were. You can see they were trying. They were checking all those hammocks that were hung on the uh, on the balcony. Uh, you know, as to the, the the dog we saw earlier in the neighboring yard, I believe that was just uh, you know a family dog that was in the backyard, looked uh, a little smaller than what you know a, a canine uh, would be. And we haven't heard the deployment of a canine just yet. Oftentimes, the canine will be uh, basically on a leash uh, by the sheriff's department unless. They have a good sense of where he's at. They need to deploy the canine, whether or not the canine generally would be on a leash. And so we're continuing to, to look through the, the homes here. He's really found a place to tuck in. There's lots, there's many more trees and bushes here. And again, we don't know if he's managed to make his way into a home. Uh, hopefully all these sliders, all these windows, all these doors are locked. If anybody uh, hears the Sheriff's Department, if anybody lives in these cul-de-sacs, you certainly want to do so. You certainly want to lock everything up. Make sure, uh, and if you see anything suspicious, uh, get, on the, get on the phone to the Sheriff's Department. Let them know that you're, see, you're hearing something on your property. If you see anything, maybe, maybe you're not home, you're watching this pursuit. If you see anything on your ring cameras or any of your surveillance cameras, that could be beneficial for the Sheriff's Department. It looks like they're all uh, kind of get, getting together a little little tighter huddle. Uh, maybe they have a, a better sense of which yard he's in. Again, the air, even the air unit is trying to locate where this, where this guy went. We saw him hopping uh, through multiple backyards before uh, going under some trees and bushes, and he has been hard to locate since. But uh, last seen within this cluster of homes, we, uh, between these two cul-de-sacs, lots of sheriff uh, deputies here. I've seen at least a dozen here, so uh, plenty of manpower power here for, by the sheriff's department as they'll continue to canvas through these yards, and we'll try and get a hold. Rich, we're Everyone's we're hearing. Okay, we're hearing now. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we're hearing now. That they may they may have located, and he's in custody. So we're trying to locate that now. Uh, so bear with us here. We're just on, we're on we're on the radios here, talking with uh, the authorities here to see if we can get a sense of where uh, he is. Also, the the police scanners, uh, which have appeared to have gone quiet at this point. So uh, give us just a few minutes here, and we'll try and locate that suspect for you. Interesting, you know, looking at this cul-de-sac here, and there was a moment where we thought they knew exactly where he was, but so many places to hide. Uh, but as we've heard, and you mentioned as well, Rich, it appears oh, there he is there. that they've got him. 
and right in front of the patrol car here in handcuffs. So thankfully this uh, neighborhood can now take a sigh of relief that they've got this guy in custody. Yeah, and it would, it, at this point, you know, they, they've cleared the truck. So it's just, it was just this one person that was left within the vehicle. We saw uh, one person that had ran from the passenger side in the Palmdale area. We heard another passenger had, had ran out uh, somewhere in the San Fernando Valley, maybe in the Sunland area. So uh, they, they did know there were, there were at multiple people within the car at one point, uh, possibly arms. We don't know if they recovered any firearms, but uh, yeah, good news here. Sheriff's deputies have got their man. Rich, we appreciate the work and, uh, and, and the work of the LA County Sheriff's Department and the LAPD uh, bringing this suspect uh, into custody who, if convicted, will face a number of years in prison.